So raising money for this kind of thing is pretty hard as an <laughs> entrepreneur. How, how are, because people come to me with a music startup. I'm like, oh, great. Got anything in healthcare? <laughs> it's like, yeah. you're going to fail. <laughs> this is a disaster. Like healthcare with the incumbents, the music industry, with the incumbents. I'm curious how two groups of people looked at you because you have been successful at raising money eventually, but I'm guessing it was harder in the beginning before you figured this out, but I, that's just a guess. And so, then I'm curious what the music industry thinks of you because they are persnickety and weird yep. and they can be you know, at their worst cutthroat and unethical. Yeah. So look, this is the ultimate question, right? Splice was at the top of my do not do this list. Do not fly. <laughs> Do not do like you're passionate about this, but don't do this. It's going to be a terrible idea. And I had an artist friend who got into programming after GroupMe was successful. And he said to me, because we started with collaboration software, and he said to me, where's GitHub for music? And it took my do not do this list and it just took it over the line. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, I guess I'm going to go down this crazy ass path. And luckily, coming off GroupMe success, Andy Weissman from Union Square Ventures, who was my first investor of GroupMe at Betaworks, and then Adam Dugelli from True Ventures, who had to run a music label for a while, small kind of indie label. They were in, but I will tell you, almost everyone else who were my initial investors, at least the, the more institutional ones, were like anything but music. Mm -hmm. Like, please, Steve, any, you can do anything, but don't do a music company. And look, the fact that I'm on this show on a path to try to get to 100 million ARR here is, is it feels like you're building a, you, it's the effort probably required to be, get to a deck of corn. Yeah, exactly. To, you know? So what about, the, what about the music industry? In a way, I'm thinking yeah. the music industry likes you because you I get rid of their biggest headache, which is somebody makes an album and then their legal department has to clean up the mess. I think that's right. I think in a moment, that's my thing in this space is not to be coming in and be like, I'm Mr. Disruptor. Technology is going to change everything. I'm not going to need your old. I actually have worked really hard to build bridges with both the you know music industry, uh, the music instrument side of the businesses. I haven't been like, fuck you guys, where tech is coming in and cloud and AI is going to change everything. It's really been a attempt to build a harmonious relationship by just doing things better and understanding everybody's needs and desires. Like we don't take away from any of the revenue that the labels and publishers. We, like we're only incremental if we work with their artists, we help them write music faster. So in general, I think that's what's been cool about building a brand like this. It's a pretty loved brand. And I, I take a lot of pride in that and being able to navigate a really, really muddy territory is in this in normally cutthroat space. Every startup needs business insurance and you should look no further than a broker. If you don't have insurance, you fail one of the first steps in broker technology saves you time and money. Prices are up to 20% lower with better coverage than the incumbents. You can go from sign up to quote and purchase in just 10 minutes. When you work within broker instead of business insurance incumbents, you're not dealing with large, slow corporations. Plus, the sign up takes days, not weeks, and the process is transparent with no opaque pricing. Here are four crucial types of startup insurance that they cover. And you're going to need all four of these in all likelihood. Cyber insurance, in case you get hacked. DNO insurance, so you're, if your directors and officers do something dumb and you get sued, you're covered. You have E&O insurance, which covers errors and omissions. That's what the E and the O stands for. And it helps you scale because many major customers will ask to see your E&O insurance in order to close a deal. And of course, EPL, Employment Practices Liability. This covers harassment, wrongful termination, and more. To instantly buy custom-built insurance for startups, go to imbroker.com slash twist. That's E-M-B-R-O-K-E-R.com slash twist. And while you're there, get an extra 10% off using the offer code. You guessed it. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode.